Okay, so for our first award presentation today, it's my honor to introduce to you Dr. Josette Garnier, who is the research director at the National Center of Scientific Research at the University Pierre and Marie Curie in Paris, and her colleague, Dr. Gilles Bilen, who is a professor of biogeochemistry at the same institution. The Ruth Patrick Award honors outstanding research in the application of basic aquatic sciences principles to the identification, analysis, and or solution of important environmental issues. And Josette and Gilles are receiving the Ruth Patrick Award this year for their sustained, innovative, high impact contributions to the science and policy of eutrophication in rivers and estuaries, both at home and around the globe. And Josette and Gilles began their collaboration in the mid-1990s through their investigation of the biogeochemistry of rivers and estuaries with an eye to translate environmental science to policy as it relates to water quality. A major sustained uh, focus of their efforts is the advancement of science and policy of the Seine River Basin in France. And together they founded and lead the interdisciplinary program in environmental environment research on the Seine, which is an internationally recognized research program designed to support sound environmental policy in this uh, highly impacted, human impacted watershed. They're also involved in writing the Seine River Basin Water Management Plan and in the development of river models that are used on a daily basis for decision making related to management of the Paris sewer system. And I'm imagining that their expertise and tools are being heavily relied upon right now as we see historic flooding of the Seine River. And their work goes far beyond the scope of the Seine River Basin and has significant impact on policy at the European scale as well. They've sought to improve the ability to forecast future water quality through the development of indicators and models and have constructed scientific networks at the regional, European, and global levels. So in summary, Josette and Gilles joint body of research on biogeochemistry and their application of their research to water resource, resource management exemplifies the broad societal goals of Ruth Patrick. So please join me in congratulating Josette Garnier and Dr. Gilles Bilen. So, good morning, everybody. Thank you to be here for this last day. And I would like also to thank everybody who participated to the organization of this very nice meeting. And also, I would like to thank the, the scientific committee of uh, selection for this award. I am very proud and very honored of this. Uh, I am also, it is also my pleasure to share this uh, award with uh, Gilles Bilen, who apologized because he was not uh, able to be here today. With Gilles, we have been working for more than 25 years when we uh, participated to the launch of the program on the Seine River. At this time, the Seine River was the most polluted in Europe. Since then, we have been working on nutrient input from human activity, and we have been also studied their uh, transformation and transfer from headwaters to the coastal zone. We have been working on many rivers in Europe and also in rivers in, the, in Vietnam, not, uh, especially. But I have to say that the Seine River is our favorite playground because it is where we develop our approach and our concept. And with this program on the Seine River, which, has, uh, which is a long-term program, more than 25 years, which is very rare, rare we, have been, we have tried to combine 
innovative research, I hope, and also uh, the societal question. And we have, with, we have associated with our uh, research uh, manager, manager, water management, and uh, policy maker. And this same program is supported by at least a dozen of water manager and uh, other people. Well, you, so eutrophication at the coastal zone is a real problem everywhere. And in the north of France, notably, we have different manifestation of this eutrophication. In the north, we have this mucilaginous phaeocystis uh, bloom. In Brittany, we have this algal, green algal bloom, which are a problem for tourism, but also for economy. And in the Seine Basin, we have these toxic algae, which are poisoning uh, fish and uh, shellfish. And it is, it is really a, a, an economical problem. So, eutrophication of the coastal zone, in fact, coastal zone has the receptacle of most of the, uh, of the pollution generated along the aquatic continuum. And studying the aquatic continuum, it means that we are studying the, the cascade of nutrients along this uh, continuum. Diffuse sources, are coming from uh, agriculture, but also from rocks weathering. And point sources are also are coming from cities, wastewater effluent, and all these uh, nutrients are circulating along the uh, continuum where they reach uh, the coastal zone causing eutrophication. Of course, we have not been around <laughs> working on this aquatic continuum and we had the chance to meet uh, colleagues, very nice colleagues and now friends who help us to develop our uh, approaches. Some questions that I will address concerning eutrophication are how much river deliver nutrient at the coastal zone, why it has been so easy to deal with uh, effluent, and why it is still difficult to manage the nutrients coming from agriculture. So nutrient uh, losses are coming, so it's uh, our uh, major hypothesis, nutrient losses are coming from the agro-food system through production, through processing, through distribution, and consumption of food and feed. And these nutrient losses reach the surface water and are responsible for eutrophication in the river and at the coastal zone when in excess. So a strength of our research has been to develop a modeling approach uh, which is useful for understanding processes, but also useful to explore scenarios and to manage ecosystem. This river Schraler model is based on a model of processes with, that we develop thanks to experimental uh, studies and field studies. And these processes are the same, this model of processes is the same along the aquatic continuum. However, the manifestation of these processes are different along the water, uh, the aquatic continuum because of the constraints that we have to document. And among these constraints, we have to document geomorphology, hydrology, meteorology, but also we have to uh, document the uh, the, the nutrient input through uh, the diffuse sources and the point sources. And for example, in the Seine uh, Basin, we have uh, 1,600 wastewater treatment plants uh, 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 within uh, the basin. 
So uh, the representation of the, uh, of the watershed is at the scale of the anterior watershed. And uh, thanks to uh, the uh, ordering by uh, Strahler, uh, we can uh, simulate uh, all these uh, processes through uh, basing, but also through the main, uh, the main axis of uh, the river, which is detailed uh, kilometer by kilometer. The situation in the early uh, 90s so was characterized by very high algal bloom in the Seine River up to 100 uh, microgram chlorophyll per liter, which is a lot, and sometimes even higher. And uh, of course, this bloom are a problem, were a problem for uh, drinking water producers, because of course it's much more expensive to, uh, to treat uh, water with such uh, uh, particul uh, particulate matter in the, in the water. And I have to say that uh, the, uh, the drinking water from the, for the Parisian are issued from both groundwater and from surface water. So it is the reason why it was a real issue. Thanks to our uh, model, in the 2000s, we were able to uh, explore scenario of uh, reduction of phosphorus to uh, reduce possibly the amount, the amplitude of algal bloom. And at that time, we simulated that an effort uh, must be done in the wastewater transplant plant, and the decrease of phosphorus was estimated to a factor of 15 which was really a lot. And uh, at, this, at this time, it was impossible to believe that uh, it, it would be uh, achieved one day. So, and this long term uh, time series of water quality in the River Seine from the 90s to, to now in phosphate concentration show the decrease in phosphorus from the beginning of the program on the Seine River and more um, an additional decrease with the uh, European uh, uh, Water Framework Directive. And this phosphorus decrease has led also to a decrease of eutrophication in the river, but only in the recent period. But we can see that uh, in, in this uh, year, in 2011, we had another uh, a new algal bloom because of dry water, which, uh, which shows that uh, this system is still fragile. And uh, with very low water, uh, algal bloom in the river are not completely over. So we can, see, we can say that eutrophication uh, combate is a, is a success in the Seine River, thanks to, I mean, I, I would say this long-term program, but also, of course, to the uh, framework of the national directive and the European di directive. So, investigating coastal zone remain a real uh, challenge, and uh, we uh, develop for this the chain of a model, and we are currently chaining um, our model of river uh, basin to a model of coastal zone developed by the Ifremer institution. And uh, of course, uh, coastal zone model can be linked with data, but linking the model, the coastal zone model with a river model allow to explore scenario. And this is the main, uh, the main interest of such modeling approach. Also, this, uh, uh, this exploration helped us to participate to the debate about uh, nutrients because there is some controversy about which is the nutrient limiting for uh, eutrophication. And now, in France, agricultural lobbies and also some scientists prone that the reduction of only phosphorus for reducing coastal uh, algal bloom. But in this condition, there is a strong imbalance of, of nutrients. 
And the direct consequence of these uh, lobbies and uh, this uh, uh, controversy is that there is a confusion with the standard uh, value of groundwater and the standard value of surface water, and also politics now try to uh, contest the uh, limit for, uh, for a drinking water uh, standard. And also, I have to note that here, France has been convicted several times for uh, this poor uh, uh, reduction of uh, nitrogen in, uh, in the river system. So in the framework of a national uh, program, we had uh, this question, how to reduce algal blooms at the coastal zone. So for this, we uh, considered all uh, the, uh, the Seine River, of course, but uh, the Seine River uh, uh, influence all the coastal zone. Oops, no, it's... Uh, yeah. So the Seine River plume circulate like this and to the north until the English Channel. For this, we had to consider not only the Seine River, but also all the small basin, the small coastal basin. So the, the ratio is about one third uh, concerning the surface area of uh, these, uh, these uh, systems. So, and with our modeling approach, after validation, we were able to uh, simulate and to calculate phosphorus and nitrogen deliveries. And we can see that uh, the Seine River has a fluxes much higher than the sum of all the coastal uh, small basin and proportional to, uh, to their uh, surface area about. So with these uh, fluxes and also with the fluxes uh, of silica that I did not show but uh, we can calculate it also, we uh, calculated this uh, indicator of coastal eutrophication potential that we developed. So this indicator is defined as the excess of uh, phosphorus or nitrogen against uh, silica and uh, taking into account the refilled ratio, which uh, is an expression of the physiological growth of the, of the algae. And uh, we can see that uh, for uh, phosphorus, in fact, we are close to, uh, to zero or even lower or even negative, which means that there is a, a balance between phosphorus and silica. So in this condition, the, the hypothesis is that uh, diatoms are a good algae, whereas uh, non-diatoms are the bad algae. Regarding the indicator for nitrogen, we can see that nit uh, nitrogen is always in, ex in excess compared to silica. So we can say that coastal eutrophication is really a problem linked uh, to uh, nitrogen. However, uh, in the sand basin, in all the wastewater treatment plant, much effort has been done for reducing also nitrogen. And we can see here for uh, ammonia and nitrate that there is, uh, we can see a, a serious decrease of uh, these two components which are uh, typically uh, component of effluence. But for nitrate, the situation is different. We had an increase and now we have uh, the, the concentration uh, are about man maintain because of this reduction here and maybe also because some improvement in agricultural practices. So we can say that uh, nitrogen originated from, uh, from agriculture is mostly responsible for uh, this eutrophication. So at, in the middle of the uh, 20th century, because of uh, the process, the Aberbosch process, 
a lot of uh, reactive nutrients, uh, uh, nitrogen, have been uh, introduced in, in the system. So the agriculture has changed a lot, uh, and uh, we had a disconnecting. Uh, we have here a disconnection of, uh, of uh, the livestock and cropping, and now we have specialized regions with only uh, cropping. And this agriculture, of course, is uh, at probably at the origin of all this dysfunctioning. In order to analyze this, uh, this role of agriculture, we develop an approach which is uh, uh, generally, uh, generalized representation of the agro-food system and which is based on the uh, documentation uh, for a region at the regional scale and at the scale of the rotation, of the cropping rotation. It is, the way is to uh, document all the input of the system and to uh, document also the yield from the crop. And the difference between the two is the surplus. And the surplus is a proxy, is, we consider the surplus as a proxy for uh, uh, groundwater uh, contamination. This approach helps us to elaborate scenario and to couple, uh, to introduce the diffuse sources in our uh, river strutter approach. So this is the way I, as it can be represented. It can be very complicated depending on the territories, uh, mainly when we have livestock, uh, livestock because we have grassland and cropland, and uh, depending on the input, the input are coming from fertilizer, but also are coming from uh, biological fixation and from atmospheric deposition, etc. So, but for uh, the sand basin, the uh, representation is relatively uh, simple because, uh, because we have no livestock uh, anymore in this basin. Uh, the same basin in ma is mainly devoted to, uh, to cropping system. So thanks to this approach, so we have a long, a long uh, uh, time trajectory. We have calculated uh, the yield and uh, we have uh, put uh, the yield in function of fertilization and we can see that from the uh, beginning of the 19th uh, century from uh, now from about the 80s we had an increase in uh, in this yield in the increase in the fertilization and the distance to uh, the curve to the 1 1 curve is uh, represents the surplus in the 80s, we can see that we, uh, we had a, a decrease in the surplus due to uh, agricultural practices improvement. And from uh, recently, we had also a decrease in the fertilization. Oof. So, despite all this uh, reduction, so eutrophication still uh, exist and uh, we have explored a uh, scenario for this. So what can we expect from good agriculture practices? Not so much, you can see is the trajectory of the surplus and the result of this uh, scenario. And uh, we can see that uh, the surplus and uh, the proxy for this remain insufficient to respect the requirement of uh, drinking water production. What about a radical change? So, we would like to uh, analyze the result of an organic uh, system. And organic system have the advantage to, to be uh, diversified. We have a succession of uh, at least uh, eight uh, to 11 crops, you know, and uh, our organic agriculture has no pesticide, no mineral fertilization, and increase, in fact, due to this, uh, all this cropping system, increase the biodiversity in the landscape. So this is the result of this scenario. Now, if we reconnect the cropping system with uh, the uh, livestock uh, production, 
And if we uh, reduce the animal uh, fraction in our diet, we can see that we, uh, we lower the surplus below the, this uh, standard for uh, drinking water. So we have applied this, uh, this approach to all the territories of the Seine River, and we can see that uh, uh, sometimes for good agricultural practice, we are below the standard, but uh, usually we are not. And uh, for uh, this uh, scenario, the last one, which we call organic, local, and domitarian scenario, we can see that uh, we can cope with uh, agriculture, can be consigned with uh, uh, drinking water production. Okay. So, and we have coupled this approach with the reverse solar modeling, and we can see the improvement in the surface water. Ah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, here, for the reference, we have uh, red to yellow uh, nitrate. So, <laughs> it means that uh, we have high concentration. And with this scenario, organic local demeterian, we come to the green, which is a good uh, quality of uh, nitrate. So, then we can uh, couple <laughs> the delivery of the rivers uh, to uh, the model of coastal zone, and uh, we uh, can, uh, uh, this is, this is uh, explained in terms of diatoms here for the three scenarios, and also in terms of uh, uh, bed algae, harmful algae. And uh, wha uh, whereas for diatoms we have no uh, decrease in uh, the production, which is good uh, in this uh, area because we need to, uh, to fish but uh, we can see that we can achieve to uh, decrease, uh, uh, really decrease harmful algal bloom. So, as a conclusion, just uh, I would like to say that uh, uh, we, we, can, uh, we can believe in a success story for, uh, for wastewater treatment plant, but we can see that uh, for, uh, we cannot expect so much from uh, uh, good agricultural pra practices, but also we have some margins to, uh, to improve uh, the nitrogen delivery to the coastal zone and lower uh, eutrophication. So, but political will willing is necessary, and also we have to, uh, to change maybe our hab habit of life. So, thank you very much. I am sorry for uh, not keeping the time. And uh, so, uh, I would like to thank our close collaborator and uh, all the PhD we uh, supervise and also the people who funded our research who are very often good collaborators too. Yeah, thank you very much.